Dr. Cornel West calls out media bias in the Democratic Party. On August 21st, I interviewed Dr. Cornel West. I asked him about the media treatment of Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. You're going to love his response. Marianne Williamson and RFK Jr. were recently interviewed. They both said the same thing. They're getting shut out from CNN and MSNBC and other platforms. You are more likely to be getting your political information from MSNBC, CNN, and so forth, where I have been blackballed, where I am in many cases, which is why I'm grateful to all of you for being here, invisibilized, minimized, marginalized, lied about, smeared, mocked. It's kind of like you just get used to it. But I was shut down, and that is why the First Amendment's important. Congenial, respectful debate is the, is the fertilizer, it's the water, it's the sunlight for our democracy. It sets us apart from all of the previous forms of government. We need to be able to talk, and, and the First Amendment was not written for easy speech. It was written for the speech that nobody likes you for. And then I think about how people were questioning why you didn't run as a Democrat. Can't they see this, this going on where the Democratic Party has decided, the DNC has decided, no debate, so they will get no oxygen to their campaigns. Uh, do you have a, any thoughts about that? And also, did that influence your run, run with the Green Party? Well, very much so. I mean, the work with Brother Bernie Sanders, and you made this so clearly with your powerful and eloquent uh, shows, though, brother, that my work with my dear brother Bernie Sanders, who I do have deep love and respect for, we have our disagreements, too. They cut very deep sometimes. Uh, but uh, but I love my brother. And it was very clear that they were going to do everything to ensure that he did not win. When, uh, when our dear brother um, Obama made his phone call and made everybody drop out to make sure anybody but Bernie, they'd rather have Trump win than Bernie win. They'd rather actually lose than change. They made that very clear. And so it's for me, I can't conceive of a Democratic Party that's not dominated with Wall Street interests, not dominated with militarism, not dominated with the Silicon Valley interests that that really speaks to poor and working people. And every four years, they got to come out and make a case. Well, you know, we're really concerned about poor and working people. We just uh, have to acknowledge that it was a second. It was tertiary. It was secondary. Oh, we're really concerned about black people, but we couldn't push the voting rights bill because Manchin himself stood in the way. But oh, you made a deal with Manchin when he came to the debt ceiling, didn't you? He still got his pipeline, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh, we noticed Manchin got more leverage than all the black voters, all the black leaders, the black congressional caucus. One vanilla man got more power than all of the black folk who put Biden in. Do they take us to be chumps? Please, let's just tell the truth. You get in trouble telling the truth, mm -hmm. and we don't tell the truth in arrogance. No, we don't tell the truth in arrogance. We could be wrong. Could you give us a better argument than what we just put forward? Could you give us a, a different set of facts and evidence? Because we're looking at the facts. We're looking at the evidence. Absolutely, absolutely. Oh, yes, indeed. Then they tried out little black leaders, you know, not little, but the black leaders said, well, uh, uh, there is no alternative so that Biden has really done magnificent things for poor people. OK, what did he do? Cut child poverty in half. Yes, he did. Did he allow the law to expand? No, he allowed it to expire. Oh, I guess it wasn't a high priority. What else did Biden do? He got an infrastructure. But why did he marginalize what Bernie was trying to put on in terms of empowering the people rather than just the inf infrastructures and the institutions. Let's be honest about these things. Well, all we're trying to do in this campaign, which is a moment in a movement, is keep the truth alive and keep the focus on the folk who are suffering. That's the vantage point, see? And that's crucial. When you look at the world through the lens of the people who are suffering, it looks very different than the lens of Axelrod and Carville and all the other there is no alternative crowd. It's a, it's a clash. It's it is. A clash. It's, it's, it's comfortable for them because they're doing well and they're not feeling the brunt of these policies themselves. But the average working people, hurting people, those people, we, we feel it. So it's an immediacy. It's an urgency to make changes. And, you know, the system is... It's going to continue as is unless we do something radical. That's we my got, thing. We got to do something radical. We, we need a rupture and a break. 
we've got to come break the back of the corporate duopoly. We've got to break the back of leadership, liberal leadership, progressive leadership that is so well adjusted to the unjust status quo, which calls into question a progressive description sometimes. Maybe they're not as progressive as they think because they don't have the courage to engage in a truth telling about the status quo that they're preserving in order to resist a Trump. I hope you found that clip interesting. I know I did. What a great conversation. If you want to watch the entire interview, click over here on your left. On the right, Dr. West breaks it down about back taxes. It's a new day. I'll see you on the next one.